Mailbag Preview Show, episode 294, joined by Jack, Peter, and Rob. Rob, massive day yesterday there. Where was it? Warwick Farm? Yeah, mate. Um, you know, I think got beaten a photo race two. I said it's got to turn at some stage, and it turned quickly. Um, <laughs> yeah, just just couldn't miss. Got some nice uh, Waller first uppers. Um, yeah, it's just just the best track in Sydney. You know, I can you know you kind of know what you're going to get. Most that get a chance is a bit off fence, but not like the debacle that was Randwick last week after the mill of rain. The uh, <laughs> the worst metro track in Australia. There we go, Peter. You, you had a decent day at Ascot as well. Uh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the track's pretty pretty tight at the moment. Um, it's difficult to make a case for anything settling worse than midfield. So, yeah, just have to be patient and try and pick your targets. And yeah, we've got Bunbury Cup this Saturday, so actually that's a meeting I think everyone's looking forward to. It's the first time they've had Bunbury Cup at Bunbury for a couple of years now, so. Uh, it'll be madness on course. Shout out to Dates and the rest of his Bunbury crew. They'll be oh, tearing the yeah. joints joint down, I'm sure. <laughs> um, I had Chad Warner on an early crow this week. He said that he heard, he's a WA boy, he heard that Zip is going back for the WATC Derby, not yep. Derby, Rob, Derby. Have you heard that? Uh, I haven't. It doesn't surprise me, though. Um, I don't think, like, this is, Probably going to sound a little bit harsh, but that Flemington track last Saturday, and we don't often say this, no but that was it was borderline disgraceful. Um, uh, only for, only for the for the benchmark of which it yeah. set itself. Yeah, but it, it wasn't a fair track, and zip away is three wide, no cover, and really, if you're three wide line into the wide part of the straight, you couldn't win. So, although they're taking him back, and I mean, he'll probably be viewed as a penalty kick. Um, there's a couple of nice three-year-olds coming through the the grades in WA at the moment, but they they're not really proven as such. Yeah, he he probably could have had one more run here. I thought his two runs were inconclusive, to be honest. He was let's he was slaughtered. Yeah. Well, was but, I mean, look, yeah, yeah, trying to slot in, go back. I mean, we saw with the stablemate Bustler, he was last and like, you know, what's the point? Like, he basically may not have run around. Mm. Um, but yeah, it doesn't that make this week interesting? It's 38, 39 degrees on Saturday. We're coming off a dodgy track. It's a week back up. There's no rain. Rails out four. Yeah. Like, what's the track going to do? Is it going to be the same thing again? You have to be in the inside four or five lanes in the straight or you can't win. Yeah, it's a good day to have a day off. I'll put it that way. If you've got something better to do, if you want to go outside in your Victoria, just go enjoy the heat. The footy's back. Although they're not playing in Victoria for some reason, well, it's actually good. You don't have to stay in your air conditioning and watch it. Rugby league's oh. back, AFL's back. Turn Work on your tan, on. Dickens. Work on your tan. <laughs> Correction on Randwick, Belmont. Work on. Belmont's yeah. worse than Randwick. That's it, it. Yeah, for sure. All right, perfect. And Jack, uh, big winner yesterday there at Sandown. Uh, God bless her. What a horse. What a ride, Mark Zard, Jono. I mean, mm. yeah, you just feel safe. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to say anything. You just uh, try and get him and you get him. And then your job's done as a as whatever we would call ourselves in our operation. Um, like back to back, like 10 out of 10 rides on yeah. our horse from King Kong. And um, <laughs> I thought the wind had a lot of merit. It it was She was pulling away on the line. Um, maybe a little bit lucky that the, the favorite science went wrong with it um but a, a good win all the same and we'll take that prize money um yeah we literally that was a sort of throw at the stumps because the race looked weak so um she's more than doubled what we paid for already um she ate up overnight and uh she'll be uh racing on and earning earning on john indeed indeed she finally franked all that good form she's been having uh with a nice city win there all right, we'll get into the weekend's racing. We'll have a look at a uh, couple of races from Ranwick and Flemington, starting with Ranwick. The Todman, the Group 2 Todman, over 1,200 metres for Colts and Geldings. A uh, couple here with eyes on the slipper. Rob, you were with uh, Shangri-La Express first up there against Switzerland. Will you be going that way? 
Well, at the odds, I think you have to. Uh, a lot of merit in that run. Shane, what Dicko's pointed out, how, what a what a beautiful uh, set of circumstances occurred for Switzerland with Tom Magnier on course, handed out the cash. God, it was beautiful. <laughs> um, rail to three strapper, meters. To the strapper. Oh. Yeah, it's just one. Yeah, yeah, to the strapper. Um, <laughs> so yeah, rail three meters, which is probably just, um, You'll see in Adelaide. So be careful. I, I, there's nothing untoward Actually, there. I, I, I seem Adelaide. I don't know. Okay, well, look, it was um, everything was in Switzerland's favour. I think it's a lot of merit. It can only improve. It's drawn low again. Rail three meters. You know what? What? You know, I'm terrified if we, we get an unscheduled one mil of rain, the whole track could go completely tits up like it did last week. But um. I, th- I think it's, you know, it'll, it'll run well. It can only run well. Shangri-La Express, you know, Switzerland obviously, you know, seems really improved from its first run to its second run. It got the job done. Um, it's quite a, quite a good field. Um, you know, the the other one, Espionage, is is a, a, a good horse. Straight charge, um, you know, it was such a great professional attitude as a two-year-old. Um, and shout out to is, is this Tom Sauce get a fix? I saw it well, around between horse, race. It's fascinating. It's Tom Sauce, but I, I think Pete is probably also Rob Sauce now because this is a horse that paraded with one of the biggest hogs I've ever seen <laughs> in my life pre race. And Scurry was not pulled off by that at all and backed it out of the yard. So uh, I think you therefore have some claim to ownership of this pony. Um, <laughs> well, if we can call this little, uh, yeah, well, I saw it. That. Um, I, I think. He's a very exciting horse because that win was like barrier troll stuff in the end. I think yep. this is not sort of this is a bit of a sh- like a, a three pointer for them. Yeah, I've got other well, ideas for the horse if he's not up to this. Okay, but like, he... how much length, Peter? Potentially, do you give a horse like that that one like that with one of the biggest rages I've ever seen pre race? And oh, he could certainly improve by an arm. Still, Colton Geldings. Oh. So you'd expect he's going to have. He's going like they've taken him out of the co-ed school and put him into the private school here, and he's going to have less distractions. Focus on his work. So he's been listening to a lot of Andrew Tate, is what you're saying. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I saw him. I saw him run with Waihaha Falls between races um, last week, and he he was a. Uh, he looked very uh, professional. There was no no sign of the big boy. Look, that's not the first time I've. I remember flying Spur in ninety ninety whatever it was oh. ninety five at his first start. He did that. He had the big hog out at Caulfield. Did put it did put me off. So I kind of learned from that that um they can still win. Um, yeah, they've got, they've got to throw him in this time of year. See, see and if he measures up, it's it, you know it's an absolute fill up. But this is a very very tough race. You've got that bodyguard as well. Um, yeah, it's almost as good as it gets. Um, bodyguard uh, would have know. started close to favourite in the Blue Diamond. Was scratched by stewards, and they were filthy about it. Yeah. Um, so you backed it. You backed it, Pete, didn't you? Uh, when it won the um, Prelude. Yeah, it was. Um, it was. Bang on in the yard. It was glowing. It's a strong sprint type. Um, what about straight charge, Rob? What sort of type is this? Because this is the favourite here, the uh, written by Colt. Yeah, he's just such a fantastic attitude, which I, yep. I rate really highly. He, he was just really bright but but calm last last week. Um, he can only run well again. Um, I'm you know, surprised his favourite over Switzerland, which has got a real boom on it. But um, yeah, it'll be fascinating to see how how the betting plays, and you know, we'll have a good lead on the track. You know, as long as we don't yeah. get you know, if someone leaves a tap on somewhere, we could have an issue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Gay and Adrian certainly have a, a pretty good charge in the field. Anyway, they what did they Cornelli yesterday at Warwick Farm, the two year old race. Yeah, no, I should I should just just stay away from the yard, just to circle the, the ward house the spot. Just go with yeah, you, guys. I know. I know. Is that I know. Just... Okay. Look, yeah, I... Done. Okay. Can I can I stake these both? And yeah. Okay. Cool. Done. Well, the only one I've I've, I've backed is this. The loser was Shangri La Express. <laughs> you were all weeks before you got there, which you didn't even know. You didn't even need to go to the yard, did he, Pete? We knew. Like Peter and I knew what you were doing on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, yeah, exciting race. 
good mm-hmm. race. Good luck to to Tom's horse. Um, you know, hope hopefully he meshes up. <laughs> Magnet, <Magnia. Well>, Papley. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll move on to the Canterbury Stakes, race 7, 1,300 metres, Group 1. Rob, there's one horse there, your favourite. Has he, there uh, is. How's he come back? Uh, he's come back very well. Um, I've looked at his two trials, super. They've got him up for a, um, you know, a Doncaster campaign. Um, so, you know, even though he won the Everest, uh, he's probably a middle distance horse. I've always said that. This is a really weak race for a Group One. Um, there's no Imperatrice who was in it last year. We were on last about the only race she's ever lost. We backed it full units. Um, but look, what what is there? Espiona. Uh, I've always been been a bit of a you know, well, I've always poured cold water on her. She's just not that great type, but she's improving. Mm-hmm. Um, you got you got Malkovich here, uh, who should go out really really hard. You got Malkovich, Cole, Karasha. I think think about it. Just sits off them and just likely wins. Um, there's few horses that has his will to win, um, you know, ever. You know, he, he is such a, just such a fighter and such a winner. And I think he'll be winning this. One thing I will point out, Rob, Pericles, uh, his first two runs at Caulfield, I thought he's looked pretty soft in the yard. So he can only improve. He's obviously coming off a one and a half sink, uh, length second to bright side, but like, I don't think he's got the ability to say knock off um, think about it, but I'll but be think about it's going to get knocked off. Yeah, like, it's what you're saying is how it's going to get knocked off. Like the third up horse with the grass weight for H form, like that's the best. Brightside's the best form in Australia. He's better mm. than Fangirl. He's more consistent than Fangirl. There's, there's those. They're the two. He's got single figure SPs just versus it. He's third up. Car to Mark one drawn one. Unfortunately, you just need to wait and see how this um, surface decides to play. Yeah. You know, because there's a day where you can't win rails and run or you can only win rails and run and, you know, the, the, you well, there's a, day a, few, here. a few extra ticks or you might get a couple of crosses by this stage of the day just off the, the track bias. Um, the other horse that interests me is Espiona. Like, it's a different type of form, but it's probably pretty relevant form for 300 metres going against Imperatrice down a straight. It was like an enormous, an enormous, enormous run. Sorry, guys. Think about it. Certainly had Espiona covered in the Everest, obviously, comfortably. Said Money in the jar. Look, I've always had a good opinion of Pericles. I thought it was the best middle distance horse of its year, three-year-old year. Um, not that it won everything, but it was certainly the best type. Um, I have backed at both starts uh, this time in. Um, so it does it does scare me. Do I want to take odds on about think about it? No, I think it will get out a little bit in, in price. I think it sh- should, you know, get pretty close to, to you know, even money, I'd say. But um Look, there's there's good pace, you know. From barrier eight, it could be a bit of a bit of a trick, um, getting getting in, or even Bandersnatch, or maybe it just finds the the one one with you know Cole Crusher and Malkovich going forward, and then you've got. Um, anyway, I don't want to do that. I'll leave that to other people. They're going to back Pericles, or they're going to back Espiona, or both to beat it. I reckon fresh. Yard key, very much so now. Off mailbag, but conduct you can all betting advice, buy Rob stuff. But with what Peter said about Pericles, a little bit soft for an outstanding trainer. This could be a little sneaky setup. All right, we'll move on to the group one. Randwick Guineas over a mile for three-year-olds. Uh, militarized, come up the short favourite um, after finishing second behind Fangirl first up, uh, beating home Think It Over, who rolled Fangirl last week. Um, Rob, it's never been really one of yours, has it, Militarise? No, I missed it on a on a Wednesday at Canary, um, which is very poor from me. Um, it, it did look pretty good that day. Um, look, I think I thought it fell into second. The form, everyone's going to say the form looks great, but as I said previously, I think Buckaroo would have gone straight past it. 
I am happy to play around it in this race. Uh, I'm, you know, end caps um, is, is question mark at 1600. Um, but I, I'm, I like the, the look of the two and the three here as a, as a play to beat it. I thought Celestial Legend um, was impressive the other week. I think 1600 can only help it. Um, and Tom Kitten up to 1600, he didn't parade as he can. So if he looks like he can look, um, I expect um, yeah we'll probably be be going that way um, with the with the two and the three. Looks pr- another pretty weak group one lads. All right, any thoughts, Pete and Jack? Not really. I guess Tom Kitten's got your SP profile, doesn't it, Dico? So um, you know if you get the yard tick and the yard improvement, you know, grand final trainer, blah blah blah. Did a podcast yeah. this week with the Pod Pod Boys. It's like a super coach one. They're, they're connected to the Seal Wolf, Rob. Looking at it, it's got excuses last two starts. Yeah, look, lovely, if lovely. going to jump out of the ground. It might be that sort of profile, but I agree. It's a very, like, uh, dull-looking betting race. It's very hard to sort of... St- well, I, I can't see how you can sort of decide. Well, militarize is is a ridiculous price here because it's got a really strong SP profile. It's got track and trip form. It's got track form. It's got grouse form, like fangirl romantic warrior form, like Jesus Christ. And we're saying this is a low race, so and it's drawn four, and it's got J Mac. He goes McAvoy to J Mac, so. Look, yeah, or it just, you know, Rule fell in. You eight, know. I think. Don't overthink it. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. But, you know, it just knocked off NCAP. Oh, it was a sensational win, but, you know. Oh, oh. I don't know. You know, NCAP, is he that good? He's, he's, he's pretty good over 1,400. Say, say Wolf is, um, you know, I, I, I like, like him as a horse. I like him more at 2,000 metres. And, um, yeah, as, as he gets older, I think he'll be a, a, a stayer with, with – with, um, you know, he'll he'll go through the staying ranks. He'll end up being like like a stockman or something. Um, but you know, again, that's sort of half eight praise um, because, as I keep saying, our stays are not much good. Um, yeah, look, I wouldn't be surprised if militarized one. Everything falls into place. He just falls in. You know, would have you know probably you know the betting suggests that's that's the case. But I, I just don't think he's good as good as everyone says he is. He you know he won a he won a group one on a wet track. Um, he didn't really do all that much in the in the Cox play, did he? No, he had a few excuses in run, but I, I thought he was inconclusive at best. He started eight dollars fifty, so but he had forty nine and a half kilos. So yeah, by done deal. So, so yeah, people, you know, the three year olds got a great record in that record in that race. And if you looked at it, I reckon the three year olds would would average around that price every year. Up the top of my head. All right. The other thing that like gets in people's heads, which I don't think is relevant, but it's certainly there. Is, like he's already a stallion. Like he's he's standing at Newgate. It's just a matter of when. And then you go like, well, if they keep running him, they must be really happy with how he's going, because all they're doing is basically like this horse to us is a is a betting opportunity, but to them it's a commodity, and it's it's each and every run just goes, is it going to be sixty six thousand per season or 115 or you know how much are we going to charge so that's it well here's a little done deal you know I, I maybe i don't you know i don't love him because he's not like your tom kitten he's not a imposing kind of horse like done deals they're, they're very often they're just the little fellas um so maybe that's another reason why i just i just don't love him but yeah i his form, his form suggests he's going to win. He's got the right jockey, and as you said, every time that they, they race these horses with, with the big stallion thing, that that you know, if if they're unplaced, they're just about reti- you know, two unplaced runs, and this horse will be retired. Mm. Yeah. And CL Wolf does have the uh, the Grouse Danusta form, which yeah, which obviously is a, a big peak for that horse. <laughs> as so. good as it gets. All right, uh, we'll move on to Flemington Race 5, the Newmarket Group 1, 1,200 metres, Imperatriz. Plenty of talk about uh, whether she'll carry the weight. Is there any initial thoughts on that topic alone? 
I think she's the most vulnerable she's been in a long time on Saturday. Um, the weight, the map's messy as. It's as messy as maps get, and it could be 40 degrees by now. And um, it is it is the best track in Australia, but if this was Caulfield, I'd, I'd just be gapping her because once a track gets past that good three to a good two, firm two, weird shit happens. And I just think she's vulnerable more so than she has been recently. Um, the speed map, my guess at it is Imperatrice, Skew Whiff, Master Fay, Astrologer, Cylinder, Magic Time, Shripper, Bella Nipotina, Ruthless Dane thereabouts. It's our time. Doesn't want to be like back. Benedetta, Ray, and even Bunos Notches, I think like it doesn't have to be last, but I don't know. I wish I had a market and, and, and fair prices on. Are they going to be four, three, five, or six abreast here? Well, like an over under, Peter. I'd, I'd be over four and a half. Yeah. You get a good value. Like you get value for that selection. And I don't know. This just doesn't look like a race I've got too much time for. I, I think she's pretty bomb proof. She's carried 58 plus three times in her career, won all three starts, uh, can handle good three services. I think that's as firm as Flemington's going to get. Um, and what is going to elevate it up to her level? Like I think you're basically just banking on the fact she's not turning up. Full stop. That you're going to get better opportunities to bet, I think, than than this. So if you like it, you could pretty happily take the price, I guess, couldn't you? But she's ten from ten on good tracks. Yeah, <laughs> two from like, two at the track, one from the, one the, track and trip. The the the, the, the Sydney horse is is a proper horse and its run was just a sort of a pipe opener the other week. I think it is some sort of hope of knocking her off. It's it's decent old weight swinging on the weight for age scale. Um, you know, it's like six kilos. Four and a um, half. Four and a half. Is it bonus notches? Yeah. Yeah, bonus notches. Um, well, you know, it would, would have 58 and she'd have 55. So it's six, isn't it? Um, four and a half from the champion's sprint. All right. Yeah, okay. he was he was given none first up short price SP, but like, he's none from six rob on good tracks. He's one from one on a heavy track, and he's two from five on soft tracks. So, okay, well that, that that does again pour cold water on it. The other one, Magic Time, is a progressive horse. Um, yeah, I think yeah, that's that's the other one. Outside that, it it you know um, it looks you know you can make a case for horses, but um, yeah, those three look to be. The you know the only ones you you've scared me with the bonus not just forty degree day needing a soft track um, and, and that's, that's your market anyway very... isn't it it's just like there's no real there's no real value on either of those two runners for eighty seven dollars to take on yeah, a two dollars sixty favorite it's like I, nah. I love you Peter I agree Magic Time profiles like hey maybe I'm the bet mm. you look at the price and you're like yeah no thanks. I was certainly expecting, yeah, a bigger price on Magic Time. She was very... I expect her to run really well, John, but yeah. I want, like, double figures to find out. The astrologist, like, it's not what it once was. The the old European holiday, it, it fucks a lot of them, <laughs> doesn't it? And I think it might have done another one here. Um, Benedetta's a really good horse, but this is a very, very good race. Um, it's our time. Looks like it's way out of its grade to me. Um. The the Kiwi horse, no idea. Just make it market and pray. Ray's been up like forever. Um, Skew with just a bit scary because of like the like the silks and the setup, but um I think it's better over further. Does get a lovely run and suited by Celine. The only horse I could entertain as a bet and I have is Shripper. 12, 52 kilos, Froggy knew it, Barra six, one track and trip. Um, I'm not in love with it on really firm ground. But when this horse has been beaten, it's like it's been beaten twice in its last bunch of runs, like a significant amount of runs, five or whatever. There are genuine enough excuses to it getting mm. beaten and it's still run fucking enormous. It's a horse 
that I think has upside to come. It's run enormous figures already. Um, if it runs the sort of number it run in the um, Oakley played or down the straight last time with 52 and a half and, and Imperatriz is a bit vulnerable, I think it strippers the horse that will beat it. Um, and I thought, you know, anything double figures was, was, was fair. And I, I've had a bet accordingly. And I, I suggest anyone out there who wants to have a bet in this race, that's how you play it. If you're an each way punter, then it's this beautiful setup for you, this horse. It's just checking the market because it's into what, $12, $13 now. I thought it was a little bit longer than that earlier in the week. 16 and, 15 yeah. last night. Yeah. Um, so I took, you know, probably around to 15 Um, I still think $12 is fair. I think anything that's like a 10 or bigger is a fair enough price to have a bet in this race if you're not going to just back the favourite. And what about cylinder? Unplaced, then retired? That's scary as hell. Tongue -tongue. Only really, only really yeah. because of the same profile as what we just spoke about. Although I don't think his CV is like, like sort of where they want it. He yeah. needs to he needs to win a race like this more so than militarize, obviously. So I don't think he's a group one winner yet, is he? No. No, no he no. was he's pretty sure he started favorite in the Coolmore Classic and was I was by backed him and it's very disappointing. I'm saying the three year olds are not up to that, open that company. Sister? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Um I've seen the three year olds are not up to open company. They're no good. Across the board. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that. I don't think we've seen enough from any of the three-year-olds, or many of the three-year-olds, I should say, to suggest that they're up to open standards. So retire them all before we get a chance to embarrass them further. I, I think the concern with him is he, he failed on a good three Flemington last start, and it's probably going to be the same sort of surface on Saturday. Yeah, you kind of just hoping that... Jay Carr on, yeah. Peter? Yeah, she's, I was just going to say. She's completely back. She's going as good as she's ever gone. Um. Like really, really riding well. She's a positive jockey switch for for this horse. Just I think from D Lane. The way the way this horse needs to be ridden with fifty one and a half. Like she just needs to jump and roll and not care. All right, perfect. Um, let's move on to race six, the Group Two Cuny, Cuny. Mile for Phillies, three year old Phillies. Um, Molly Nickers was storming home last start. Was it behind the Grinzinger Bell, maybe? Yeah, yeah, it's in the um, in the Grinzinger Bell race where it led and it won. Mm -hmm. Um, Molly Nickers started sort of five bucks. Pink Shandon was heavily backed. I backed it at eight. So it started almost five, five sixty, five. Six bucks, maybe. I mean, um, Barcelona, French and Devils in that race. Yeah, it went good. The, the two sort of short price, the, the two SP profile horses that weren't suited and were good, uh, it, Molly Nickers and Autumn Angel, who was uh, a horror watch first up. If you're scary, like brave enough to, to have a bet on it. <laughs> Question is, where are they going to get to on the map today or on Saturday? And, and if the track's firm, more often than not, it's on pace suited. Do you really want to find out about him again? So, I, I think there's a lot to like about Molly Nickers. Like Tropical Squall just sort of franked the form again on Saturday in Sydney. She started eight fifty before that versus Charmstone, who could have won a Golden Rose. She's a proper proper horse, Molly Nickers. Um, I think even Rob, who hates her guts, might have <laughs> softened his hatred a little bit just off the, the. There was a bit of merit to the performance there first up, Rob. Yeah, hundred um, percent. You know, she might be the best of a very bad lot. Who knows? Yeah, and um, it's the same sort of story. Autumn Angel. She was. Oh, well, she's got. She she beat Tropical Squall, four eighty versus it. She was expected to run well against it. Um, that's good form. It goes Billy Egan to Mark King Kong Zara Barrier Five. <laughs> um. I think if you like the horse, you're entitled to have a bet. I just worry where you're going to get to and run, how this track's going to race by this point of the day. 
I think Sassy Boom had its complete birthday, its last two starts, um, and and is is somewhat of a risk at the price. Um, what else have I got for you? Vaselina, I think, will improve, but I wouldn't want to run it on firm ground to be honest with what they had, like it went through last prep, Peter. And then Pink Shandon was back last start. You can forgive it, I think, um, but it gets like the the poo switch. It's going from barrier two to barrier eleven, and uh, I don't think that suits this horse. But J Card does stick, and I expect she rolls forward on it. Hmm. Look, this is look. I, I thought a few of these. Um, Autumn Angel in particular operated like it had a stack of improvement there. First up, um, Barrier Road. As you said, I just don't think this is a race to really be jumping into anything settling worse than midfield unless we've seen to this stage that they're making some level of ground. There is a bit of a northerly wind forecast there on Saturday, but it's not super strong from what I can tell. Um, the horse I thought was good with excuses first up was Sarasana, and it's got an SP yeah. over Sassy Boom, three wide, no cover on pace. Like, There's not a great deal of speed in this outside of, say, Grinzinger Bell and Sassy Boom, who can just roll across from the wider gates. And I think Johnny Allen can just park this thing one out, one back, midfield with cover. You're getting double figures on a horse that started 440 and was pretty firm there first up. And I think you can make a case that that first up performance has shown the horse has improved by a couple of lengths. So each way, again, I don't really like Benny each way, but I've found a few each way since I've been doing Melbourne form because it's, Probably a bit more consistent. Um, each way, Sarasana, that's a, a bet for me at, what, $11, $12 and three twenty the place. All right. Because I know you're going to back something else as your best bet that might be coming up in race one. No, I oh. I thought I'd just sort of, you know, preview the race and sort of keep one quiet, and that was it. <laughs> well, my my comment, my only negative on the horse, and it's no knock John Allen. I just think it's the wrong jockey for the right horse. Yeah, if Jay Carl was on this thing, I'd have a huge bet. It's a yeah, Jay Carl below that sort of yeah, like just, just suck up and just like blending. yeah, yeah. He, he's not perfect for the horse, but it's a good opportunity for John. I, I agree with everything what you said. All Absolutely right. everything. The the SP profile alone, but then you got the map tick second up. Mm. And the final race, we'll take a look at it. Flemington, uh, race seven, 1,400 metre, group three. Jimmy Starr's come out, heading to uh, Newcastle tomorrow instead. Uh, amenable now, the favourite. Was good behind... Um, no, I thought it was... Oh, sorry, Mr. Brightside back uh, in the Mimsy was what I was thinking of. Uh, second up, last prep, first up here. 145 days off. Is that the way to go, Jack? He Do ticks you... a lot of boxes, a uh, hell of a lot of boxes. Um, 250, like well, it was 380.90 last night, but there's always Jimmy Star was going to come out. Yeah. Um, I need to think about it, mm. but. <laughs> It's potentially on my list as a big bet on Saturday. It ticks a lot of boxes in interval. First up, last prep, enormous, gelded, tried well, B Lane, Bryce Kent, first up, fresh. Barrier seven, now small field. Yeah. I, I just I, I just wish Jimmy Starr stayed in and would have kicked its head in, I think. What do we know about Berkshire Shadow, Pete? Anything? Yeah, just having a look now. Um, because it raced at Royal Ascot, uh, ran fifth in the Queen Anne behind triple time. Um, light infantry man, Inspiral, modern games also finished in front of it. So, look, that's pretty decent Euro form. Um, but I don't, I don't know. It, this race just seems trappy at best it's just one that i don't really have any interest in there's too many sort of unknowns floating around so yeah a hard pass for me pinstripe was running a big second to bright side first up last prep albeit yeah, i think suited field. a small field too yeah yeah race as well at flemington generally all right uh 
That'll do. Oh, the other one I was going to mention was Windstorm. It might be a bit out of its depth here, but it was um, when we had a look at the review, it was certainly good. Uh, just peaked late on the run there at uh, where was that? That was at Flemington as well. But in that Jimmy Star Macram race, yeah. it's probably is it, not. is it big odds? Twenty bucks. Yeah, it's going good. I just think <clears throat> if you're betting in this race, you need to be winning on a medal. First up, it, it was enormous. Um, it was the fastest last 400 metres of the meeting first up. Um, then it was 2.3 lengths off right side second up. Like, Don't think, just <laughs> responsibly. Gamble responsibly, 1-800-858-858 or visit the website. Um, that's been, should I wrap it up now, John? Uh, we've got some best bets to give out. Oh, sorry. If, if we can, <laughs> um, which uh, Pete was our only winner last week. We'll just quickly glance oh, over that. He gets in super quick. I, I can't remember if he's had a if he backed that one or not, but then I get confirmation almost like as its tail crosses a line about the price he's taken. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. No deductions there. Clean as a whistle, Estrella. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, so it was uh, four bucks you took there. What did it start? To, to, was it? Uh, it drifted a little bit late, wasn't it? Like three forty late on on the exchange, but um, like three seventy, sixty, fifty. Yeah, yeah, but you know, bless Blake Shin's cotton socks for just oh, putting the fearless. horse into the race. Like fearless young man, you know, if you sat at midfield, it doesn't win. So, so was is this any? Is, is this the last week of tips? No, we'll do last. Uh, we'll do next week as well. That'll be the last one next week for this. This little season. Okay, well, we need a scoreboard update, actually, man. All right. Pete's miles in front. I don't know if you want one, but um, <laughs> Peter's $248 up. Rob's $270 down. And you and me are $500 down. Unfortunately. Right. My best bet at Flemington is uh, in the good race, and it's Shripper. Each way or just win? How yeah, dare you? Yeah, $13. Yeah, I'll take 13. I'm cheering for Imperatrice even more now. <laughs> um, gee, oh, I thought you were going to go race one, Hunchy. Yeah, but now, well, that'll just that'll bring me back to I got to back that yeah. and then I got to find the next week's winner and I'm still behind her, so it's still in my head anyway. So next week I can just go for like a $20 shot. If I lose, Fascinating I race that opening one with hedged Hanchi lost gallon lost, drops. Lost with well, the hey, lost form. lost got its form franked yesterday, didn't it, baby? So um mm. I was yeah, very keen on that before it even raced that lost. Um bumped into Macarena at its first start. Um <laughs> look, I am just gonna look, I had a host of ten dollar shots I could nearly tip, but with I don't know how the track's gonna play if it's inside or out. I'm just gonna play a very straight bat and just like build for next week. Uh, think about it. Um, I'll take BSP. I think it would be about 210, 220 on the day. So think about it for me. All right. Peter? Yeah, race six, number one, Sarasana, $11, oh. the win, $3.20, okay. the place, each way. <laughs> if I were playing poker, you've just got me. You're calling me. You're <laughs> in my head. Got position on you. Yeah, yeah like was... last week, I like I love that Australia. Like We had a huge bet of it. And my stuff, you know, and he's just is that up. just 50 each way, Pete? <laughs> and he's each way, putters, yeah. which is yeah. triggering me even more. Each way, all day, putters, each all way, right. all day. Um, I struggled to find anything on Saturday, so I'll go tomorrow at Ooh. uh, oh, Ta- Taupo, uh, race seven. It is a group two, uh, so I thought it's it's all right to play a little Friday, just back um, to lay punters, whatever this is, back to lay. <laughs> you beat SP and you run second. <laughs> right, uh, yeah, I have placed in every every one. <laughs> um, race seven, number one, Sudbina. Um, draws perfectly, has all the good three year old form. Heading towards an Oaks, uh, it's a little two thousand meter jobby. Um, and uh, yeah, it's only three dollars twenty, but I couldn't find anything sort of a bit more exciting to try get closer. So I'll do that next week. This will just help me out a little bit. And then next week I'll come over the top. You two are playing the V and I'm just trying to like lap one. Ramp one over, over yeah, the keeper. 
Good right, night. that's been uh, the mailbag episode three hundred sixty-four. Hope you thoroughly enjoyed uh, the episode, and I hope you have a phenomenal week on the punt. Uh, if you want to uh, get involved and race winners with us, Lazy Susan, yesterday um, we're airborne. We'd love to get you involved too. Uh, really nice fillies from the Melbourne Premier Sale just gone. Both head to Kieran Ma. Uh, they are both Vobus. Um, they will be racing in Melbourne for the majority of their lives. Uh, really, really like them. If you want to find out more, we've got a Alabama Express who's doing an absolute phenomenal job to the numbers. He's upgrading uh, his siblings big time. Uh, if you want to find out about them, uh, Alabama, a Hansi Attic, both fillies, both head to Kieran, Jono, J-O-N-O at themailbag.com.au. And please, God, if you're going to try and bet in Sydney on Saturday, do yourself a favour and get your hand held. Themailbag.com.au. The horses speak to him. They whisper. And Rob will tell you what they said via the app. Download the app. Gamble responsibly. Have a phenomenal weekend. And get pistol set late if you're sick like me. Bye for now. <laughs>